Welcome to another episode of Coffee with April. This time I have an Ikawa with me and what we're going to do is I'm going to walk you through how I roasted on this um, for the World Brewers Championship in Boston earlier this year uh, where we ended up second place with the highest scoring open service in the whole competition. Now before we move on I just want to mention this is not a, a, a paid partnership or whatever this is just us uh, supporting Ikawa in the sense that it's a great product and I think personally it made a big difference in terms of competition roasting all over the world and that's it's actually a fair um, uh, one of the bigger part why, why we actually ended up doing as, as good in Boston as we did was that we had a, a, a better control over the roasting that we've done before so in my previous experience competing I, I find it quite difficult to actually bring roasted coffee um, um, over an airplane, uh, whatever you are, exposing it for different temperature and different concepts. I think green coffee is something that travels a lot better than roasted coffee does. And it just gives you the opportunity um, of turning, in, uh, turning something into something really tasty, I think. Um, and it also gives you a flexibility in terms of roasting different batches, in terms of working with a lower amount of, of competition coffee as well, which is more affordable for you as a competitor. Um, the, the kind of story of starting to use it was that um, when I did the Swedish National, um, I had a bunch of different roast profiles coming with me, uh, both on, on the lowering uh, behind me and also on a probat roaster. And I brought that with me to Sweden. And the day before, I was just brewing the coffee. And I had this, this, this notion before I even went there that I'm going to just bring in a kawa because I'm not really sure what's happening here. I wasn't completely happy with the profiles. and. In the end of the day, I didn't want to do it, take any risks. So I ended up in Sweden. I kept all my coffees, all of these profiles. I think it was 12 different profiles of the same coffee before, um, uh, before competing the next day. And I realized that it just wasn't tasty. It wasn't tasting the way that I wanted to. And I thought that was super frustrating. So um, what we actually did was, OK, I took out the Yukawa in the, in the evening at the hotel room, and I just started to roast. <laughs> And I roasted and I roasted and I roasted and I took it back with me in the in the morning of the competition and tasted all of the profiles again blindly and, and what came out of here uh, was actually very reliable and tasted much better. And there was an intensity there because the coffee was roasted so fresh. Uh, but I still with the profile concept that made it really clean, um, which enabled me to have a high intensity taste profile, uh, but still be clean and vibrant, which I thought was really interesting. Um, I should say that the profile that I worked with in Sweden versus what I did in the in Boston was very very different, um, but that was a really interesting experience. And I decided then pretty early on that I would work with Anikawa for Boston as well because I wanted to have a wider range of opportunities of roasting different batches, and I wanted to roast it very very close to uh, competition. So. Uh, I basically had three months in between Sweden and Boston, and um, I roasted as much as I could, tried different concepts, different profiles, and and the focus, looking at the score sheet, and again, this is an, an interesting and important part of it. How you roast a coffee should dictate how you brew the coffee, right? So they're both really linked together, together with the green coffee, right? You need to understand that it's a whole chain of values that you need to respect and understand from um, 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 from, from a brewing competition or um, perspective. So it's important to, to realize that how we roasted this coffee was very much connected to how the coffee ended up being brewed in Boston, right? So if you want to try this at home, I would suggest to do a similar brew approach that what we did in Boston as well. Um, but some of the key things here was that researching a cowboy roast, I found quite often that they were very, very quick. And, I assume that part of why they are very quick is that the main objective for the roaster is to be working as a sample roaster, right? And a quicker profile, it's less time, more efficient. And we do roast quite quick when it comes to sampling roasting uh, on the Ikawa as well. But when it comes to brewing and to get the best results, I find very often we want to stretch out the profile as much as we can. So we ended up roasting an 11 minute roast, which is relatively long uh, in the history of Ikawa uses. I know Ikawa themselves were pretty um, surprised over that fact. Um, but what we wanted to do is to, to highlight basically body balance and get a really well integrated acidity. 
Um, and we find that with this specific coffee, which was a pretty extraordinary coffee in itself, being a geisha varietal up on 1900 meters in Costa Rica, which is guys unbelievably high. On top of that, we have the processing, which is natural anaerobic, which is relatively new, very experimental, and no one really knows how these coffees behave from a roasting approach because we don't have enough experience roasting them, which was, again, a great uh, example of why the Akawa is really good because I could do a lot of different profiles to be able to find the profile I wanted to do. So we stretch out the profile, build up a lot more sweetness, a lot more balance, better structure in the cup. We take a very, very low end temperature to be able to keep the transparency and the vibrancy in the cup. Um, we decide to roast six hours before the actual competition, which a lot of people have been asking us about and they think it's a bit crazy. Um, I quite often argue that the coffee has this window right after roast where it's actually really tasty and pretty clean. Um, on Ikawa, I find quite significantly, consistently, that um, tasting it either the same day or the day after is always going to be the best in terms of quality. So an older profile rarely does what I want with it based on my approach of roasting and brewing. Now, roast is six hours before competition. I still remember the face of the other competitors uh, in the final when I kind of walked in with an cow under my arm, plugged it in and started to roast coffee. Um, I'm sure a lot of people thought it was pretty crazy. But again, it's about pushing the intensity of the cup as high as I possibly could. And by roasting fresher, I can actually do that. And there was a few other things we did to be able to make it clean and balanced. And um, part of that was grinding very early on. So we were grinding the coffee up about one hour before the actual performance, which really cleaned up the coffee. So we retained the intensity of fresh roasted coffee, but we cleaned up the cup and, and it really made it um, taste the way that we want to. And I think that was really interesting. Um, a few other things to kind of notice and mention is that and Ikawa um, is actually designed to roast about 60 grams of green coffee. Um, for the competition profile, I used 40 grams, which is a quite significant difference. So uh, if you want to know the difference more firsthand, you can take the same profile, you can roast 60, 50, 40 grams on it to kind of see what comes out, which is basically what I did from a research perspective. Um, I mean, obviously the, the lower mass in relationship to a higher energy will, will give you a more roasted coffee versus a, a bigger mass on the same energy, right? So it also depends on your style and your approach and what you're looking for. Um, but overall, I think that was a really, really interesting um, process. And I mean, we obviously ended up making a pretty tasty cup of coffee. Um, and I mean, these days when we're working with it, because we're going to continue to have it as a, as a competition approach here at April, because it makes it makes a lot of sense. Um, we're also going to make some other videos in the future, more showing our sample roasting approach to it. Um, but the cool thing here is again that we we get so much control. So whenever we compete now, we can travel around, we can just take it with us, and we can push our profiles, and and we know they're going to be consistent and behave the way that we want to. So um, overall, a, a super interesting um, uh, process and. What we're going to be able to see on the on the profile here is that again we're stretched out much much longer than what people are are, are used to. Um, since this is a very different roasting system, I know a lot of people roasting in this are, are still very concerned with rate of rise curves and they want to make things look similar um, to what they experience on on larger machines and. We kind of approached this from the beginning that it's, it's a completely different system. The probes are very different. The placement are very different. The just whole environment and, and you know size of it is very, very different. So we disregarded um, all of the kind of traditional notions of, of rate of rise, which you can see on our profile as well while roasting. Um, and we just really focused on making tasty coffee. So that ended up being a, so much just trial and error uh, to be able to figure out what we actually wanted to do in the end. Um, now, that was about it for this time. Um, if you guys have any comments on this, uh, just comment down below. As always, you guys are gonna be able to see the, the profiles either underneath here or on the Akawa website. Um, thank you guys for watching.